The first time I was aware of Ron Fellows, I didn't meet Ron, but I was aware of Ron, was around 1988. I was at Mosport in Canada for a Corvette Challenge race. And there was a guy down there and uh, said, oh, hey, how you doing? He was introducing himself and I said, so what's going on? He said, well, it's the players, it's the players coming around now. And he says, uh, you gotta watch that Rick Spinard and you gotta watch those fellows. And I was like, Rick Spinard, yeah, I know Rick Spinard, yeah, the, the fellows, Wh which fellows is that? And he said, no, those fellows, you know. And I said, uh, uh, the, he said the, the Camaro fellows. I said, yeah, Camaros, fellows. Okay, I'll, I'll watch for them then. Okay, good. And uh, sure enough, everything's going on. Everything's coming down. There's just a load of noise. Cars come around and there's like three cars side by side flying through turn one. One car gets sideways, gets bumped around and trips, flips, slide down on the roof. And the guy goes, that's one of them fellows right there. That's that Ron Fellows. Ron Fellows is a name that's known to fans of many forms of racing, from NASCAR to Le Mans. When you're a race car driver, you drive a bunch of different stuff. You know, I know Ron's done the NASCAR stuff, which I know he, I'm sure he likes the paycheck. He started in carts, then Formula 1600 and 2000. Ron found his first significant success in the Players GM Challenge Series for Camaros, where he won the Drivers' Championship in 1989. He was then able to move to the Trans Am Series. It was here that he was first noticed by Herb Fischel and Doug Feehan. Then I next ran across him in Trans Am. Uh, I was at Chevrolet at the time, and he was at Ford at the time. He was running a Mustang, and I remember specifically at the uh, Detroit Grand Prix. And uh, it was quite a battle that was waged that day. I think Wally Dallenbach was there, and I think Chris Neifel was there, and I know Ron was there in a Mustang. And, and uh, it, was, uh, it was quite a battle royal. And I think it's really when Ron began to emerge as, as a quality driver. And uh, none of that was wasted on Herb Fischel, who was in attendance that day. And I remember having a conversation with Herb, and he said, you know, what, what do you think of, of this Ron Fellows guy? I said, you know, I said, he, he did a pretty good job today. I said, I've, I've watched him before, and I said, I think he's improving. And I, I said, I think, there's, I think he's even going to get better. I don't, I don't think he's shown any signs of, of, of slowing down. I think he's only going to become more proficient. So, in 95, Ron moved to the Chevy team. Later, however, the team was pulled from the series, but Ron took this opportunity to shine on other kinds of tracks. He ran and won in such diverse venues as the Camping World Truck Series, the Sprint Cup Series, NASCAR Nationwide, and the Professional Sports Car Series. In 98, he was called back to join the fledgling Corvette team, and not just because of his skill as a driver. I watched him because he was popular, and he, and he handled he handled the events outside of the race car as well or better than he did the events that took place inside the race car. And it's been our finding that when you have drivers that are really good outside the car and, and they get to be pretty good inside the car, it makes for a good race program because it makes for happy fans. And Ron had that magic. He had the ability to do that. He did the initial testing and development with the Corvette C5R and later scored Corvette Racing's first ALMS victory in September of 2000 at Texas Motor Speedway. Down in Texas, close personal friend of Ron's was a sponsor on the car, AER, Engine Rebuilders. They were holding the race in the evening because it was too damn hot to hold it in the day. And at that point in time, I think it was still 117 degrees. We had one car down there and it was going to be Ron and Andy and Ron started and it was brutal. Had no air conditioning in the car, it was a hot car anyway. Our nemesis, the Viper, is there. Ron gets done with the first session and he is exhausted. He is worn out and when you have heat exhaustion, I mean, it's, it's nausea, it's dizziness. So now Andy's in the car and we got a ways to go. Now Andy is, is just reptilian in his ability to handle the heat. I mean, he was wearing a hoodie when it's 117 degrees outside. So he was in there. I immediately went back to the trailer with Ron to see how he was doing. We didn't have a medical staff there. And I said to him, we got to get you cooled down, dude, in case we got to get you back in the car. He says, I know, I know, I know. Put a lawn chair out, outside the trailer. He stripped down to his skivvies. I got a garden hose with a sprayer on it. He's sitting in the chair. And I'm spraying him with his garden hose, right on the full public view. He's just in his undershorts. He's getting cooled down. That was what we had. Well, you know what? It worked. He got cooled down, 
gets back in the car, and he gets out, we go on, that's our first victory. Ron won the ALMS GTS Driver Championship in 2002. You know, everybody talks about what a class act Ron Fellows is. Well, winning that award was an opportunity for him to again demonstrate that trait. You know, I, I really think probably the coolest thing about Ron is who he is, you know, a, as a person. A, and I don't think that can be an, uh, explained better than uh, our 2002 season. Uh, going into it, the rules in the series were such that uh, really would be difficult to have. Even though it's two guys driving the car, the rules were set up really so that you would just have one driver's championship. And, and Ron, you know, being uh, which he am the longest, was the chosen one, and rightly so. Uh, but he knew that was a tough pill, you know, for me to swallow. And I remember Sears Point, you know, uh, him coming up to me and saying, look, I know this is tough, but I tell you what, you know, 2003, that'll be your year and, and I'll support you. And, uh, you know, we went on and, and Ron won the championship in 2002. But one of the coolest things that I really think speaks best to the character of Ron and, and of course, uh, Linda, his wife, his entire family, is that uh, in 2003, uh, we were uh, actually going out to dinner at Laguna Seca. And uh, both Ron and Linda gave me a championship uh, ring representing 2002. Even though I wasn't called up on stage, you know, as the champion, uh, you know, Ron and Linda doing that was, uh, you know, kind of just showed uh, what amazing and classy, uh, you know, people they, that, that they are. And he is a marvelous young man. He gets it. Or he wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have picked him. I wouldn't have gone after him. I wouldn't have put him on the list. Actually, and again, it, it speaks to <laughs> Ron's character. But in 2001, uh, you know, myself, Ron, you know, Scott Pruitt, uh, the guys from the, the four car, you know, we're walking through downtown Le Mans. And I don't know whether it was, you know, myself or one of the other idiots, but one of us said, hey, if you, <laughs> if you could sleep with any woman in history, you know, who would you sleep with? And, uh, you know, Kelly Collins immediately was like, Pamela Anderson, Pamela Anderson. And we're all shaking, shaking our heads. And, and, uh, and Scott, <laughs> Scott Pruitt, he's such a dink. And uh, he, he, he says, well, what do you guys think of Paula Abdul? But we went around all of us, and then when it came to Ron, we're like, all right, Ron, so, you know, any woman in the history of the world, who do you want to spend the night with? And, uh, <laughs> and Ron picked his wife. Ron continued to drive and develop the team into a powerhouse that won at Daytona, Sebring, and finally the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Ron there in the early years uh, really was the, uh, you know, the, the strength of the team. And, uh, you know, as the program moved forward, it, it just became stronger and stronger. And, uh, you know, you look at those early uh, years in GT1 and how we were able to dominate, uh, you know, those were amazing times. The first race that I was Ron's crew chief was 2003 and we actually won Sebring so that was uh, very special it was very special for me because it was my first Sebring win and um, I think Ron had won a few by then so uh, and then we were able to go on and uh, win the championship in 2003 with them which was very special you know every championship that you have um, you know uh, not that it puts you up and it just you know makes all your hard work worth it so uh, you know, being able to work with Johnny and Ron was phenomenal that year. And, uh, you know, like I said, Ron made it real easy by the end of the year to be more than just driver and crew chief, more like, you know, friends. And then uh, we just able to race on the weekend. So it's pretty cool. You know, I think we raced in Lamar with Ron. I probably was there six times with him. We went on that same year to win the 24 hours of Lamar. That for me personally, probably the most prominent victory of my career. Ron would have to t tell you what his might be because I'm sure personally he has some great ones. But I think for everybody involved, it was wildly emotional, so difficult to achieve, coming on the heels of the Daytona win. In 2007, Chevrolet recognized Ron's contributions to Corvette racing. The limited edition Ron Fellows ALMS GT1 Champion Corvette Z06 is the first signed special edition in Corvette's history. You know, the Corvette, uh, you know, heck, Ron's got a Corvette named after him. He's got a Ron Fellows Corvette. So, you know, you can't have that type of association, uh, you know, with a car without it being very special and dear to your heart. I can't imagine any higher honor for anybody who's been associated with Corvette than to be selected and admitted into the Corvette Hall of Fame. That's, I think, something that everybody aspires to achieve if they have any love or any aspiration or any passion for what Corvette racing is. 
Ron continues to be involved in Corvette racing as both an advisor and an ambassador. He continues to race in NASCAR. If you'd like an insider's view of his exploits there, you can check out his Facebook page. Ladies and gentlemen, our first inductee into the 2011 Corvette Hall of Fame, Mr. Ron Fellows. Ron Fellows for his outstanding accomplishments and significant contributions to the Corvette. Induction to the Corvette Hall of Fame, September 1st, 2011. Congratulations, Ron. Um, this has been one hell of a day <laughs> uh, for a, a Canadian boy, <laughs> uh, very special. Um, I can't thank you well enough. Uh, as you can tell just by the video, this is, this honor is, uh, it, being part of the, the Corbett family is, is obviously very special and, um, it's all about the people, as has been mentioned before, and uh, um, I, I can't thank my family enough for, for being here, Linda, Lindsay, Patrick, and Sam. Um, we made a pact. We made a pact as a family. We would always travel together. Hey, we do. Um, my kids have grown up at the racetrack, um, and a big part of the, the their growing up has been with Corvette racing, and uh, um, it, it's just fantastic to see familiar faces here and, and uh, uh, extended family, the Canadian contingent. Uh, Marilyn, thank you for your hospitality. Um, my teammates, uh, uh, Johnny and Andy, um, thank you for being here. And um, Gary and Robin. Um, Gary, who would have thunk this in 97? <laughs> uh, this is where we be. Um, Gary, Claudio, Tom Wallace, Carla. Um, it's just uh, Gord Wilson from Wilson Nibbler in Canada. Um, th this is just a, a very, very special day. One I will never forget, um, and thank you to the to the Hall of Fame for inducting me and uh, and my family, um, and it is absolutely my honor to be uh, to the McKeegan family and the Quinlans. It is absolutely my honor to be inducted with Claire and Ray, and uh, again, thank you so much. Um, this is truly overwhelming. Um, how about that car? <laughs> Harlan and Kirk, you have outdone yourselves, and I'm taking it home. <laughs> um, again, for just a, a, a humble Canadian boy, this is uh, this is fantastic, and uh, I will never forget it. Um, thank you, thank you so much. We're going to invite um, Gary Pratt, Johnny O'Connell, and Andy Pilgrim to come on up. Well, good evening, everybody. You know, this is the first uh, time in 10 years I've missed a practice session or a uh, qualifying or race or whatever. And I'll miss one tomorrow morning, and I, and I do it again 10 times over to be here with Ron today. Um, You know, Ron has, uh, I think our first championship was 2002, 2003, and 2004, and I don't know if you guys ever heard the story about how close we came in uh, 2001, where it uh, came down to the last race. All we needed to do was complete, I think, 25 laps, 
to score enough points in a 10-hour race. Going in the race, you're thinking, no problem. Well, we start the race, we have an issue getting a qualifying, and we didn't qualify very good or uh, didn't actually get a time, I think. And we were starting uh, last. They had a, uh, a caution, three or four laps in. We're still pretty far down the pack, so we decided to come in and get fuel. Get fuel, the car goes out, and then it starts missing and doesn't make it around. And in the ALMS, you have to be able to start. Crew can't go out and work. The driver's the only one can work on it. So we weren't able to complete those 25 laps, and that was very, very heartbreaking for everybody. And uh, Ron's one of the guys that really picked everybody up and said, you know, if these things were easy, they wouldn't be worth very much, and we're just going to have to work harder. And, that, and that's what we did and came back, and Ron won the, the next three championships. So uh, that's something that really gives you an appreciation for how hard these things to do and, and what, what he's accomplished in, in his career is, Magnificent. I think you kind of compare Ron with, we've all probably seen the movie The Right Stuff or True Grit. Those are the words that describe Ron Fellows. Thank you. Good evening. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Ron, congratulations. And all the other inductees, congratulations uh, to all them and their families. It, it really is a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I had some really embarrassing stories on that little tape, but they weren't all on here. But uh, one, of the, one of the best parts about racing is you get to learn some of the idiosyncrasies of people. And uh, one, of the, one of the first times I met Ron, I rode Atlanta in 19, 1998 when we were just testing the Corvette, and I actually got to meet Ron. I was probably telling some lame story somewhere to my guys over in the, uh, what was the other team at that point. And Ron comes over, I think it was lunchtime, he's with Chris Neifel. And I was telling some story, and I have this, you know, this thing with this Scottish accent when you're talking about stuff. And I was saying something, this Scottish accent thing, and it's like, hey, you're doing all right, Jimmy? And I heard this voice from that, and it was Ron, you know, doing a Scottish accent. I thought, this guy's okay. This guy's going to be great. Now, his accent wasn't as good as mine, maybe. It's all right, you know, it's good. It's not bad. The other thing that I did say on there, um, being a sort of lifetime committed, or some would say need to be committed bachelor, um, this is very serious actually, running, running with Ron over those years and being a bachelor, it was an absolute privilege to see Ron and his family. It was tremendous seeing all of you guys grow up, boy, have you grown up too, wow, um, I haven't seen you for a few years guys, uh, so, but it really was a privilege to see the relationship Ron had with Linda and uh, I've always said to my friends, I said, you know what? There's one couple that I know that are just so much in love and so much together and I can tell you there is hope for marriage and there is hope for great relationships and coming from a bachelor that means a lot, I'll tell you what. But um, it, it really, really was something to see and I'm being very serious, right? I know I mess around but that you and your family, it was really great to be around and that was one of the best parts about being with you on the team uh, was that and thanks again for all the memories man, we had a great time and congratulations again. But. My Canadian brother. <laughs> you know, it's so funny to hear, uh, you know, Andy talk about the kids growing up. Because, uh, you know, in 2001, you know, Sam and Patrick were tiny, and I could beat them up. <laughs> I don't think I can beat them up anymore. But, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, everyone, uh, Ron, from, from the get-go, you know, the, the love that everybody has shown this guy, uh, it's just the neatest thing and to have shared in it is uh, you know for me as his teammate over you know all those years is uh, you know that's rocking chair equity and the stories that he and I are going to have you know down the road when we start remembering races uh, is going to be really cool because you know I mean I, I was you know talking about some of the stories there uh, you know in that video and Linda that's true you've heard that story before and, uh, but, uh, you know what, so one of the coolest things is there is a great bond that, uh, that you have with your teammate. Uh, some teammates are competing against each other. Not a healthy thing. One of the beautiful things about Ron and I is, you know, it's like about three or four races into our uh, relationship. God, that sounded gay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when he hugged me and said, Johnny, you savage. No, he didn't. <laughs> 
but, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, you gotta have a little fun. But, uh, but where you could just tell, okay, we were, we were, we were working together. You know, it was not, you know, uh, what we were looking for in the car. And Ron, always extremely meticulous with, with setup. And, you know, really loving that aspect of, of you know, really going over the car. Uh, my patience was never quite what his was. And at like 8.30, you know, when he was my ride home, I'd be like, okay, Ron, let the engineers do it. And, uh, but Ron always wanted to make sure uh, the car was perfect. And, uh, and when it was, we won. I, I mean, we had some phenomenal years. You know, one of the things that, uh, that really hasn't been addressed or that we haven't you know, spoken of, we've spoken of his character, we've spoken of his family, his love, all that kind of stuff. Ron is a badass race car driver. You know, Ron is... You know, and... and to be honest with you, you know, uh, you know, at this type of thing, yeah, you want to hear you were a good guy and all that, but you want everyone to know you're a badass fast. <laughs> and uh, and the, you know, Linda, do you remember that year at Sears Point when he got the pole? And I mean, we are watching. This was, I think, the last year we raced there, and Ron and I won at uh, Sears Point five years in a row. Nobody else did that. And we're watching qualifying. And and when you're the driver, you're you know what that car is supposed to do, and you're listening to it, and going into one, it's supposed to go, bah, ah, you know, where he lifted, stay with me, okay, and, and qualifying, I'm watching, and Ron's just like, bah, up the hill, it was sick, because he thought he had a stuck throttle, and then, bam, 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 and through turn two, and, uh, and I, like, I remember, like, Linda and I, do you remember underneath, like, the, the, uh, whatever it was, the, uh, the bleachers, and I'm like, oh, that was sick! It was so cool. And uh, so, you know, I guess you have to be a race car driver to appreciate <laughs> stupid things like that, but I'm telling you, it was cool. Uh, or the, you know what, or, or also, you know what, there was that stint. And he and I, I know, and, he, and I'm sure you would have, you know, stories, you know, the same for me, but the last year he and I raced together at Le Mans, we are on the same lap as the Aston Martin, and it starts pouring like you would not believe, okay? And, and just utterly dangerous, it got so bad that they actually red flagged the race. Well, what a lot of people don't know that we're watching that is that Ron was on a tear. You had David Brabham and uh, in the Aston, and I wanna say he was, you know, Ron was lapping consistently in the wet, like 30 seconds a lap faster, it was insane. And when you're watching this on the monitors, you, you know, and you're a race car driver, and you know how the pressure that David Brabham is feeling, this thundering Corvette coming after him, and actually it was the red flag that saved Aston from, from getting whooped that year, but then also knowing what Ron was having to do to do that. And, and I can't think of a, a more appropriate last stint, you know. That was cool. So, you know, you have all those great... <laughs> you know, you have great race car driver memories. And, uh, you know, and to share with a guy... <laughs> God, I'm gay. <laughs> to, to share, you know, with a guy who is one of your best friends and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and a person that you admire as a race car driver and as your friend. Very cool. So, Ron, good on you, man. He almost had he almost had me in tears there. I had shared um, I had shared in the seminar how uh, I was invited to go along with the validation team when they were doing the 2009 Corvette and certainly the ZR1, and I uh, I got to ride with uh, with Ron and I drove first and here I was passing three cars and on the highway in these back roads in Colorado, and I look over at Ron, and I said, how am I doing? He said, I don't know, fine, he's just texting away on his text, you know. <laughs> when it was his turn, I was hanging on for dear life. 
I found out what ZR1 Brinks can do. And there was two other guys that were on that validation team that are good friends of Ron's that are here tonight, and I'm gonna ask them to come up too. Why not? It's a party, right? Past Chief Engineer Tom Wallace and Gary Claudio, past Marketing Manager from Corvette. tell any clean ones. No. <laughs> Ron Fellows. I mean, the first time I talked to him, uh, Nifel says to me, you got to meet the rocket. I'm going, who the hell is the rocket? And it was Fellows. And just the first meeting with him, with his demeanor, the take charge attitude, the this is going to be something special. I'm in for the long haul. I'm ready to go, whatever it takes, the tenacity. I mean, he just blew me away. And he truly is the definition as Gary and, and uh, Andy and, and Johnny. Uh, uh, Johnny is gay, by the way. I, yeah, it's okay, John, it's all right, baby. Ron's a married man and, you know, but teamwork, as I said, the tenacity, family man, but truly, I think what encompasses, uh, uh, includes everything, encompasses Ron Fellows is the word gentleman, because that's indeed what he was. After 2001, when I, I came to Ron, who was really the, the captain of the team, and I said, geez, we want to do something for the troops, I'd like to get the guys together, we go overseas and try to do something special for the men and women that are serving our country. He's, I mean, before I even got the words out of my mouth, I'm in. And he worked with me and got the rest of the drivers, and we did it two years in a row. But no matter what it was, what it took, he was there, and with the fans, he was the one, believe me, he would sign autographs till his hand was numb. Because he believed in what he did, and he was so thankful for all of you, for the museum, for the, the, the men and women in the plant, he respected everybody and realized what a team and what it took to make this a go. And he's just a great guy. God, it sounds like we're going to announce bands of marriage. But anyway, Ron and his family, congratulations. You're the best, buddy. You are truly the best. Versatile driver, God bless you. See you later. Well, 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 Ron. Uh, I want to tell three stories. The first one was, and they're all good. The first one was um, back when uh, I was fortunate enough to get the best job in the world, and, and uh, Dave Hill retired, and, and I was fortunate enough to take over the job. And I got to my first race. And being a pure, pure racer, all of a sudden I was part of the team. But you know, the first time in, you wonder, Oh, will I accept me? Will I step on my foot? Will I be in the wrong place at the wrong time? Will I say the wrong thing? I really want to get off on a good foot. And I have to tell you, between Gary and Robin and Ron and Johnny, it wasn't even 15 minutes and I felt like I was part of the team there and, and we only did, went and did better things after that with respect to the relationship between a production car and a race car. So, so I want to thank you for that because, uh, man, within 15 minutes I felt at home and it was, it was just awesome, and we had a heck of a ride after that. Um, the second one is, I'll tell you all out there, a lot of you know, but some of you might not know, that when we were in the process of um, doing the, uh, the Z06 before me and then the ZR1, uh, there's a bit of Ron Fellas and Johnny in every one of the Z06s and ZR1 we do. Uh, we didn't talk about it much, but um, we would do our best as 
production engineers to flog the cars and you all know about the 24 hour test that we'd run at pure race race speeds quite often at road atlanta vir etc and uh, you all know jim marrow who has done the uh, the, the laps at Nurburgring. Jim and I would feel like we had the car rung out and then we'd call Ron in and, and, and Johnny and say, all right, tell us what it needs. And we'd be all proud and, and they'd get in the car and within three laps they'd be going five, six seconds faster and say, you need, need a little more rear bar, maybe a little more front spring rate. And we'd go, oh. And you know, we'd make those changes and the car was better. And, and you all ought to thank him because uh, they're the reason these cars are so good in the final analysis when you really put them through the, those paces. So. Uh, that was a pretty well-kept secret, but we thank you for that. Um, we thank you, Linda, for allowing him to come do that. Um, you and the family are just so gracious uh, to be able to uh, allow him to help us with that. And, and from there, we've done nothing but continue to grow the relationship between the production cars and the, and the race cars. And it just gets better and better and better. And I, I can sit back now and watch it and have fun and say, hey, look what these guys are doing. So. Okay, now the best story. Um, Buzz talked about the test trip that we were out west, out in Colorado and, and, and places. Uh, we were in this particularly beautiful two-lane twisty through the valley between the mountains um, ride and uh, doing some, a little bit of filming, but mostly just having a good time putting the car through their paces before they would reach production, but uh, for the photo shoots, et cetera. And we had, I think we had ZR1, Z06s, the Grand Sport wasn't born at that time, but we also had um, uh, coupes and convertibles. And of course, Ron was driving and, and uh, uh, a car on and off when he wasn't sitting in the passenger seat texting, but he was driving. And we left uh, this little spot where we had had lunch, and it was a beautiful twisty section of the road, and we had already been on it once, so we knew it was, uh, let's say safe to drive, like double twice the speed limit. And I'm in a, I'm in a Z06 and I'm having a heck of a good time. Test testing, of course, we we're testing. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm gaining on the guy in front of me real fast and I'm thinking, well, that's a convertible, base convertible behind me, no problem with that, he'll never catch me. And within three turns I look up and I'm going as fast as I can possibly make a Z06 go, and here's Ron Fellows in the driver's seat of this convertible, and his grin is about this big. <laughs> and he wasn't five feet off my bumper, and I, it's, it's like, who are these guys behind me, you know? And, and, and oh, we just had a good time. Then we decided maybe uh, that probably wasn't such a good idea. To, <laughs> but but uh, uh, four turns later, we wicked it up again, there he is. And literally, he was just there with a big old grin on his face and, and just having a good old time. So, so that was, uh, that was my, uh, one of my Ron Fellow stories that I'll never forget that time. And uh, made some good articles and some good pictures and some really, really great memories. So we just want to thank you. You're, you're so important to Corvette and, and what Corvette stands for and all of our fans and, and the capability of the cars. Uh, I mean, it goes tremendously to the race team and, and you particularly for your early work there and the work you've done with us since then. So well-deserving to you and your family. Thank you very much.